I'm Eric Cristivo from WeHo. I'm John Hayden from Wilton, and we are the, the W, w Boys. Boys. Entertainment television has been around forever and ever, but we, the W Boys, are kicking it up a notch in the best way possible and creating our reactions from an LGBTQ point of view. In this week's episode, we talk with the one, the only Billy Porter, drag icons are scary, ooh, and ooh. Wayne Brady is getting some, if he wants it. And trust me, John, he wants it. Let's take a look at what's happening in our gay entertainment world with news and reviews. What goes around eventually comes out. Wayne Brady, who recently shared that he dips in both ponds, revealed his DMs are flooded with options when it comes to who he could find himself attracted to. John, I have to ask, do you think that Wayne Brady is pulling the selfish pansexual card right now? Um, the DMs that he's sharing are showing all humans from all different uh, walks of life. So what do you think? What's your stance? I think good for Wayne. Yeah. Good for Wayne. No, he's not being selfish or avoiding. He is, sounds like he's being embraced by by just about everyone. So good for him. You know, I've I've watched him for so long. I've, I interviewed him before he came out as pansexual. Oh. Great guy, very fun. Um, but no, if, if baby, if you got it, want it. And like that look suit. at that look at that suit like that suit, that suit is it. going on i love it i love it i love it wayne i'm 100 percent here for you i don't slide into people's dms i slide into other things call me oh baby. you would slide <laughs> right into those dms yeah shout out for the suit we love it and uh we love to see wayne brady living uh his truth he just recently came out so we love it i love it all right well we have good news. Oh. We have a story about a successful trans athlete. Ah. Bad news. Oh. It's Caitlyn Jenner. Wah, uh, wah. Sir, wah, wah. She's reuniting with her former stepson-in-law. Check it out. Got it or you don't got it, okay? Physical talent. Um, you can improve on it, but if you don't got it, you don't got it. The athletic mind. And, I mean, all the greats like yourself and like yourself just... Yeah. Great competitive. Yeah, it. yeah, it's oh. not just the competition, yeah. you know, and beating it. It's doing everything when nobody's watching. I've heard nuts things he said. <laughs> like, like out of this world insane. Did you get me that fight? Ooh, he's pretty good, man. Oh, yeah. All right. What happened that night when you had the traumatic brain injury? I woke yeah, up from my coma. They were telling me that I probably never walk the talk. Traumatic boy. When I woke up from my nose job. It was yeah. horrible. Oh my God. I saw you kick God, some ass. God gave me fast feet. There was a fight in high school that turned up. Where did Jenner go? Would you have to give up to make um, it to where you are right now? I mean, nobody has melt one performance better than I. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. That is Caitlin with co-host and Chloe's ex-hubby, Lamar Odom. The show is called Keeping Up With Sports, because, obviously, they're joined by podcaster and influencer Zach Hirsch. But let's face it, it's the two hottest messes from the Kardashian clan that we're here for. If they were a Middle East country, they'd be Mesopotamia. <laughs> if they were a building on an army barracks, they'd be the mess hall. I could go on, but you get the message. Paging Messica Simpson, <laughs> Messica Simpson to the stage. Ah, uh, listen, the, what, my first uh, sentence that came out of my mouth when we watched that trailer was, I hate that she doesn't even look that bad. Right. But then as it went on, she began to look more and more like the painting that is placed behind her with whatever she, <laughs> her smock she was wearing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I, in my opinion, Caitlyn Jenner did um, Kris Jenner really wrong in the way that she made the transition all about her. Um, not to say that it, it shouldn't be, but the way that she used the platform for the Kardashians yeah. on E! at that time. Yeah. I think that she really painted them in a, in a bad light. 
And I think that you can say what you want about Chris uh, Jenner, but she's a fabulous mom, right? Um, yeah. She's taking 10% from all of her children, but she's still <laughs> a fabulous mom. I'm surprised to see that Lamar Odom is still um, relevant on television. And it does not surprise me at all that Caitlyn's teaming up with him. Well, okay, let's... The word relevance doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence. Yes. Okay, this, uh, this is a desperate gasp. Oh my God, please pay attention to me for Lamar. And to a lesser extent, Caitlyn, I mean, she's been living off her Fox News hits for years now. So it's nice to see her um, at least getting back to something that she can speak competently on. You know, I mean, athletics, you know, of course. are why we care about her. Right. And if they're, that's, that's going to be the, her strength in the conversation. Yeah, um, yeah and absolutely. That's probably the only part of the conversation that I would trust her to lead. <laughs> but I do think it's ironic that at this time, Fox News um, does not take Caitlyn Jenner seriously at all. They quite you know, think the well, opposite. I don't think anyone takes her seriously point. at all. Right. But when you got to fill a six minute segment, you got to film. A six you got to fill the six segment. minute segment. All right. Well, speaking of a little bit more <laughs> than just six minutes, John, <laughs> this week, multi-dimensional horror hosts, producers and drag icons, not RuPaul and Michelle Visage, but the Boulay brothers announced their Dragula season five national tour set to haunt North America this May and June. And I just wanted to spotlight this story super quick because if you have not been to a Boulay Brothers show or if you simply haven't even watched the show, it's available on almost every streaming platform you can imagine, especially Shudder right now. For my horror fans at home, we touch upon horror every single week here. Yeah. But the <laughs> level of production with a Dragula show as opposed to a RuPaul's Drag Race show, not to say that one is superior than the other, it's just a whole different special effects. Mm -hmm. Makeup is picked <laughs> up a notch because they're often trying to recreate iconic horror looks. Right. Um, and the music is not always going to be just top, 40, yeah. you know, Dua Lipa, this not which love you, Dua Lipa. Of course, you're watching at home. I know you're a huge fan of the W boys. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that the, the Boule brothers, the way they spotlight their finalists and their winner, the amount of money they put into their production <laughs> is chef's kiss. So send us the invite. We want to go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't like to go much beyond Wilton Manors. Let's be yes. honest. I don't like to. I mean, right. the fact that I come to the studio, which is all the way in Fort Lauderdale. Which is, by the way, not an easy feat to get jumped <laughs> to the studio, okay? Often we are um, b b b giving some lunch, perhaps, or, or some rich people water, the smart water you should see as rider. But I'll, I'll tell you, I would travel to see these guys, to yeah. see their show. I mean, really. I mean, if it's, you know, Miami, Orlando. I was going to say, I, do a Miami. I'd, ca show. I'd cash in some frequent fire miles and go all the way up to Atlanta because they've got great sky clubs at that at that airport so but yeah i'm very excited i yeah. love i love this maybe uh, we'll do everybody. some w boys um uh, behind the scenes work and, and reach out and see if we can do some on the on the scene interviews sounds we'll great into existence <laughs> well speaking of speak speaking of speaking things into existence yes tickets to drake's tour ain't uh. cheap seats for this weekend's show here in south florida start at about 200 dollars, and that's for the nosebleed sections but a woman at last weekend's show in san antonio texas made it pay off. She got a sign that says, I'm five months pregnant, can you be my rich baby daddy? Well, first of all, I don't want to offend your real baby daddy. But I would love to, first of all, get you out of the pit so we can put you somewhere safe like the VIP or some shit. Because you can't be pregnant with that style. When I start playing some of these slappers, we can't have you getting pushed around. Second of all, I'd love to give you $25,000 so you can be rich baby mama. A pregnant woman with already great seats got Drake's attention, asking him to be her highly paid baby daddy. While he didn't commit to 18 years of child support, he did move her to the VIP and gave her $25,000. The real baby daddy can handle the rest of the financial and diaper duties over the next few years. Very cool, Drake. Imagine if she wasn't pregnant. She just got a 25K tip for going to the Drake concert. Just, I mean, I wonder if he could even see the belly if she was showing or if he well, just saw the sign and said, all right, girl, here. Well, she was only five months pregnant, so she probably wasn't showing probably wasn't even that showing. much yet. So 25K to Drake is like a 
trip to yeah, the, Rosie's. That, yeah, that's like giving uh, it's like us giving two dollars to the girls at Lips. Yeah. You know. Oh gosh, I can't, it's funny because I was as we were watching that video, <laughs> I was just thinking about the moment that Madonna brought Drake up on stage. I don't remember if I don't know oh, if yeah. you remember oh, this yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And she grabbed him by the neck and made out with him. <laughs> and he said that the he had so many reactions to his face and people reacting on TikTok and different social media platforms because he had a look of stank on his face. And he later <laughs> clarified that Madonna had great breath. So mm -hmm. clear that air. Mm, if it's still out there, who knows? Yes, of course she does. <laughs> um, every week we do like to spotlight some television or what we're watching at the movies. And this week I wanted to jump in to ex-Twilight stars, Kristen Stewart's new raw thriller comedy love story. It's receiving all the positive queer and non-binary attention we love to read about. It's featuring a cast and a crew of many, many new and upcoming faces within the queer television and film industry. Love Lies Bleeding is turning all the right heads. Watch this. You talked to your dad recently? Why? Give us a call. Where did you appear from? Oklahoma. I've never been anywhere but here. What were you doing with that big girl? <sighs> Get a lot of crazy ass foreigners mostly. How's it going, guys? This here's Jackie. Hi. She needs a job. Says she'll do anything. Yeah, you like guns? Not really. What the fuck you doing here then? I'm a bit more powerful than a punch, huh? Fuck yeah. Call me when it's done. What is this place? Huh? You don't understand. Get back in the car. They found a body. Looks like you've got your hands full. Don't regret this. We'll just need to fight back. I'm gonna tell them everything you ever did. FBI, open up. Are you threatening me? Yep. Well, that was really stupid, honey. I'll never fall in love, okay? the good goosebumps <laughs> we were just talking about the soundtrack alone how mm -hmm. um it enticed me and listen i love <laughs> uh, uh, a raw kind of set in the 80s late 80s a queer love story that not everything goes right the entire time um and i watched a few different interviews on this john and kristen stewart really made a point to say that you know queer people gay people lesbians in particular because that's the, the two main roles are yeah. uh, women who love women. And queer people do a lot more than just come out of the closet, right? They they love hard, they create hard. And this movie, we're gonna see mm -hmm. all of that in one. And mm -hmm. the cast is fire. Oh my God. Um, and we're gonna have to take a, a trip. I think we're gonna have to just go on, it's gonna be, uh, at the theater near us and we can just go on a daytime. A daytime oh my God, I go. love matinees. Yes, I love matinees. Matinee. I was thinking. I was thinking. I'm uh, thinking manatee, which is, well, I love those too. Which is not. I, I love manatees as way. well. Yes, they're tastier though. Uh, and what was the last movie that you saw Kristen Stewart in? Even I mean, it's been a minute. Um, Were but, you a Twilight fan? Um, not really. Yeah, me either. I mean, but the thing is, and and if you get to be in one blockbuster franchise in your life, most actors would would dream of it and be thrilled with it. And Kristen 
was, but she, but ever since she came out, ever yeah. since you know she was able to break free of the her and R. Pat uh, create Hollywood created storyline and everything. R. Pat um, threw she, me for a loop. For a <laughs> oh yes, okay, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. Come on back, come on I'm back there. to the early two thousands with yes, me. We're yeah, there, we're there. Um, but she seems so much more at ease in the interviews that she gives. She yes. seems so much more happy with the roles that she's choosing because I did get to interview her during Twilight. Oh, cool. And she was good, um, but she, you know, she, you could tell she was being weighed down. I thought, you yeah. know, maybe it's because she's young and she is, um, you know, uh, just sort of getting used to this. Um, but now we know uh, it wasn't a comfortable feeling for her. It wasn't a comfortable place. Uh, and now she looks like she's just having the time of her life. So you go, girl, and you keep going. It's funny be that we're talking about this today because the memory of when Twilight won Best Kiss, I want to say in 2011, maybe at the MTV Awards, <laughs> and our pats tried to lay one on her, and it was post their breakup, and she felt noticeably uncomfortable. Yep. And that's when he ran into the audience to give a big old wet one to Taylor Lautner, the other co-star of Twilight. So it all comes back to it. Yeah. It all comes back. The W Voice <laughs> is a proud part of the Hotspots magazine happening out television network. We are one of the largest nonprofit LGBTQ media companies in America. Celebrating 40 years in 2024, we are committed to our 11 pillars of the LGBTQ plus community, including support for the black community, lesbian and queer women, Latino, trans, students and youth, Seniors, HIV, AIDS, LGBTQ, plus healthcare, business, social justice, faith, and the W boys, queer culture, <laughs> help support our mission. Oh. Now, yes. John, before I, <laughs> before I pass over the mic, you know that we are all about name dropping and celebrity ambushing. So, before I go into my state of FOMO, <laughs> tell us about your celebrity interview this week. Well, celebrity interviewing and amb ambushing on red carpets is what I did to Billy Porter, or BP, as friends like oh. me call him, when he came to town for the diversity honors. He was honored uh, by the Harvey Milk Foundation at their gala at the Hard Rock Guitar Hotel, which is such a cool venue. Such a cool venue. He talked with me about LGBTQ plus civil rights, his love of South Florida, and more. I ambushed him to make sure he made his one choice, <laughs> WeHo or Wilton. Check it. All right, everyone, John Hayden from the W Boys, WeHo to Wilton, and I'm with the one, the only, the magnificently fabulous always, Billy Porter. Hi. The honors tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. So you're getting the Champions Award tonight. What yes. What does that mean to you? I'm very humbled, you know, People speak very often of activism as being, I often hear, oh, it's so courageous, or it's so, you know, and it's like, for me, as, as a 54-year-old queer man who came out in the 80s, it doesn't feel like courage as much as, much as it feels like the only thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's like there is no choice but for us to show up in this way and make sure that our community is solid because we have work to do. Yes, we do. We thought we had crossed over to something that looked like grace, to something that looked like equality. <laughs> We're not there. No. We're back to where we started. Spanish. There's nothing to fear. We did this already. So it's time to come together and do the shit again. And you leading the way, I have no doubt we are going to make it, girl. Now, um, but you talk about being here doing um, doing the work. You were here a few months ago for Stonewall. Yes. And a few, a little bar crawl on the drive. Yes. You're here again. I'm sure As we do. A bar crawl to, again on the drive. Shut up, there was a bar crawl left. <laughs> and you're coming back from Miami Beach Pride. I am. What is so special about South Florida to you? Um, I'm going to find them. Particularly Fort Lauderdale. Okay. There's a old school community there. You know, we call them the gay ghettos. Yeah. There used to be gay ghettos in every city in America. And because of the performative, uh -huh. it's performative. The performative 
progress. I remember reading articles about a decade ago, love you too, about a decade ago, where they were like, oh, we don't even need gay bars anymore. Right. I remember reading articles like that. So, Believe it. these spaces are where our community grows and strengthens. And so when I'm here, particularly Fort Lauderdale, because Miami has lost a bit of it, no. but Fort Lauderdale, there's a real consistent queer community. Yeah. And that makes me feel safe. And it makes me feel proud. And it's always sunny. Okay, so you have um, an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony. To get two the, Tonys. And two Tonys. To get the EGOT, you need to win an Oscar. What is your ideal dream role for an Oscar award winning performance? I, you know, that's not, to, that's not something that I can predict. Uh -huh. I just ask the universe for good work. Oh, boy. And I choose the work. And we'll see. We let the chips fall where they may. Okay. You know, the awards are a byproduct of the work. It's not the reason why we do the work. I'm grateful that I understand that because it's not really a thing. Okay. It's a thing, but not a thing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I it's a yes exactly. and. Yeah. It's a balance. Of course, I want to win an Oscar. And I don't do my work to win awards. Right. I'm grateful that I have them, though. I'm great. I, see, I love when you're nominated because we get fabulous. That's, see, that's that's what I'm here for. Okay, so now the show that we're doing right now is uh, We Ho to Wilton. My co-host okay. is from West Hollywood. Size must be chosen. We Ho or Wilton. I'm not, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I, it's a yes and. <laughs> <laughs> yes and. All right, Billy, thank you so much thank for your you. time tonight. Diversity Honors, we hold a Wilton. Tune in. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank Love you. It. Oh, my God. That was such a fun night. Billy was great. Faye interviewed Belinda Carlisle on the red carpet. I'm telling you, heaven was a place on earth. I'm mad at you. Saturday at Guitar Hotel. It was so great. I'm happy for you, but I'm mad. I'm mad that I wasn't <laughs> there. So I'm, I'm as... Yes, you can keep talking about how fabulous it was. It looks like it was an incredible event, but I have major, major FOMO. However, yeah. I am so, so happy that the people who received um, acclamations and were, were, were recognized were, and we need more of that representation all yeah. over the place. We absolutely do. And next week, uh, we're scheduled to talk to trans icon Candace Kane. Ooh, getting down to the nitty gritty. Oh, she yeah. she is nitty and she is gritty. <laughs> we're, uh, she's going to debut a new parody. Uh, I can't give too much away yet, but okay. it's, she's going to um, debut a clip of it here on our show. First time ever seen publicly, so I'm really looking forward to next oh, week. A parody of um, a well-known song, or a parody of a of a well of a, well, of a, a well-known a product. A Oh. A well-known product, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, leave it at that. All you right. just dropped the whole bomb, raw-dogged it, and walked away. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So if I'm talking about next week, <laughs> let's go to last week. Yeah. When we tackled the hot ones in a Hot Wings Challenge. This week, we have the annual Hot Spots magazine happening out, television network Spell Off, which I didn't even know was a thing until I read it just now. But <laughs> there's a twist, because it's the W Boys, after all. Um, and uh, we've got a little prop. Uh, you can't really see it uh, too well. It's a retainer. Here, it's if clear. If you put it up against your shirt, you can mm, see it. A little bit. Oh, no, yeah, not, no, not, not really. Maybe mine, you can, you can see But trust it. me, so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to, oh. Yeah. And, uh, I'll start. You put your uh -huh. one first. Okay. Uh, done. Yeah, yeah. So, John, uh -huh. please spell the word Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P. I. That is correct. It's a say. That is correct. <laughs> Please remove your. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, All right, Eric. Uh, uh, your word. Uh, uh, Girl, come on. Oh, other way. Other. Uh, oh wait. No, that's right. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. We did a whole okay. twenty-minute okay, rest okay, rehearsal okay, okay, to okay. get this right. <laughs> All right, Eric. Your word is Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Can you use that in a sentence? Yes. Your word is Sasquatch. S-A-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H. <laughs> 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 
A T C H. Wow! Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, John, uh -huh. I'm gonna keep it in. Your second word is attachment. Uh, you're really good at this. So, attachment. A T T A C H M E N T. Attachment. Attachment. <laughs> we look like the, a character from <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> All right, Eric, your yes. word to spell is not Saturn, it is not Neptune, uh -huh. it is Uranus. Uranus. U-R-A-N-U-S. Uranus. Wow. All right, girl. John, uh -huh. your third and your final uh -huh. word is platypus. Platypus? Platypus. Platypus. And the small animal. That and tastes good. This is my platypus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's your hot ass. Yeah. P L A T Y P. You got the U -E S. Correct. Oh, uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna wear this to the eagle tonight. Okay. Eric, your final word. Alrighty. Is queef. As it yes, queef. Queef. As in <laughs> a as in a heart that does not tell. U U Jaho E. F. Queef. Wow. F's are hard. F's are hard to say. S's are hard to say. No, F. Like, F for Frank. Frank. Frank Sinatra. F. F. F is hard. That was fun. Oh my God. That was fun. I'm glad I'm that I brushed my teeth and whitened them. I am, I'm participating in a town hall after this, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be very newsy and very future featurey. Futury, so I'm going to wear this uh -huh. to lighten the mood a little bit and, and enhance my journalistic credibility. If I had a buzzer, this is where I would buzz it because we both <laughs> want. So we'll just buzz our shelf. Well, of what's our prize? That you have done a great job not leaning on, by the way. Thank you our very much. Our prize yep. is a shot mm. of a libation. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. It's going to warm the throat. Um, and it's going to take us into our weekend predictions. So okay. let's take a little bit of a taste of the weekend. Oh, cheers. Love you. First shot on the W, boys. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, that can only be described oh. as unfortunate. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We should have oh. tried it with the retainer. Oh, my God. No, no, because then it would spill on my lovely shirt from True Blue uh, in Wilton Manors. Blue. They have such great stuff. Like. I, I go and do a pop up. We do need to Let's do a pop, do a pop up, up there. Up there yeah. They're really great, and yeah, I mean, I just I, I need to go in like an hour before I go in because like I just want to go through all the things. But this is what I settled on this week. It's very Florida. It's very fun. Um, just thank you so much for dressing me. I appreciate it. it. Your glasses, your eyes, our logo. Which it, we love our. W, I mean, by we the do way. love Can we the W. Yeah. Our w. Yeah. Oh, love her. Last week I felt like we were kind of in a void. Me too. I often yeah. feel like that. But, <laughs> but the W, right w here, rocks. We love it. We're also taking suggestions yeah. for what you think we should showcase on this middle table weekly. It might turn into yeah. a few different items. Or it could rotate. be our book club, it, which consists of anything we just had laying around. As a woman, <laughs> a very nice box. A punk house in the deep south, an oral oh. history. I love oral histories. But. That shot tastes like the it weekend, it's and better that now. means it's time. Oh, it, it's speak, better now. Speak for yourself. Yeah. It brings me to our predictions for the weekend. Before we go, we make our predictions for the weekend every single week. Now, last week, we made three predictions, and we were two and one. Let's have a look. A Kanye and or his wife, Bianca, will be featured in at least three stories <laughs> on TMZ this weekend. <laughs> I predict hmm, a lot of... Aws, and a bunch of tossers and takers <laughs> drinking beer. I predict I will be totally worthless on Monday. Eric, don't call me. Look at Mr. Beaglesworth. Shout out Mr. Beaglesworth. That was at the pub, uh, and there were lots of awes. Our good friend Faye Watt hosted the event. It was fabulous. Now, the other predictions, Kanye and his bride were not on TMZ three times. 
They were on TMZ four, four. times. John was texting me every four single times. time he saw a new headline. I literally got four texts at different hours of the night saying, number two, number three, look, it's happening again. Um, and, and I just want to say yeah, quickly, yeah, quickly yeah. because we tend to joke a lot on this show, because um, we need that, right? We need to laugh every week. I do want to spotlight how much of a happier person you have been with Mr. Beaglesworth in your Aww. life. Just to tug on those heartstrings. A little bit at home. Mr. Beaglesworth is a newer fixture in John's yeah. life, and he has only changed him for the better. Oh, Beagles is How were you on great. St. Patty, uh, the Monday after St. Patty's Day? Well, that was the prediction I got wrong. I was okay. actually functional after St. Pat's Day because oh. I had a four-hour client meeting. Four hours? Four hours, Sunday afternoon. Which client? Uh, I don't know. You can't say the client. <laughs> but, and, and the meeting was needed, and the meeting was good, but... Could have been a Zoom. Oh my God, I was at that meeting. Oh my God, you were talking about that <laughs> meeting. <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just, that shot. That just, just got that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that was a that was a long meeting, okay. um, but it was a necessary <laughs> meeting. Yeah. And wow, that was a genuine wow moment for me right there. I wasn't wow. going to mention the client. You're the one who. That is it. hysterical. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, just kind of gagged myself a little All bit. Right, well, let's, let's get, get to this week. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> top that gag right there, so I can't top anything. Let's get to this week. It's a weekend of music, food, drink, and men, honey, at the Off Sunset Festival. As part of the L.A. Leather Festival, I predict a lot of happy daddies, favorite, and a shortage of poppers in Silver Lake. <laughs> Listen, Silver Lake and poppers, they just go together. They That's really all do. I really have to say they, about that one. They totally do. Yes. Well, as we mentioned, Drake is playing in Sunrise this Saturday and Sunday. I predict <laughs> he will not give me $25,000, but he may give me a restraining order. I feel like a restraining <laughs> order from Drake is just like the best possible kind of restraint that you can get. Oh, I would frame that. I would put that on like front door, Facebook uh, profile picture, all yes, of it. I'd carry it in my wallet. <laughs> it would be right next to my vaccination card. And Sydney Sweeney's Immaculate, new movie, new film alert, opens this weekend. I predict I will need a new pair of underwear, honey, because listen, <laughs> it looks steamy. That's it for this week's show. John, I can't even believe that it's week two, episode <laughs> two. Check, I've got a buzz. Um, and as always, if you guys at home have any <laughs> ideas uh, for a game or an interview, hit us up. Although I will say we have quite a few exciting interviews planned and one more of those fireballs and I would spill a little bit more. But oh. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, not until it's on the books and preferably in the can. But I will yeah. say next week we will preview Candace Kane's genius look at a delicate issue. That's the W Boys for tonight. We'll see you then. Stay slutty.